Welcome to the Vista Family History Center community class on using your iPad or iOS smartphone for doing family history. I am currently using an iPad and so your screen may be such that you'll have to scroll down to see some of the options that I will have on my screen. We're going to start by going into the program and when you open the program you're generally taken to a pedigree view of a, your family tree and down at the bottom of the screen are most of your menu items. You have the tree view which is on the left and it's uh, highlighted in green. Then there's something called tasks which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, for those of you who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if you have this option turned on, uh, you may have a temple icon down at the bottom. There are recents for viewing recent people you have visited and then a more menu and we're going to tap on the more menu and go into our settings. Uh, this menu opens up several things. On the left hand side at the top are several menu items. These are going to be the most frequent things that you might do on Family Search. Down below you have settings, help, memories, other apps and signing out which we aren't going to talk too much about. But I want you to notice at the very top of the right hand side there is a pedigree view and there are two icons there on the right hand. They have now made it possible for you to view your tree as a fan chart and by tapping on that fan chart icon you can then open your tree as a fan chart. So going back down to the bottom on the left hand side we're going to tap on tree and you'll see that my image is no longer a pedigree chart, it is my fan chart. I personally like this view to begin my research. It reminds me of the relationships, which line I'm looking at as I work on, on various people. You will notice up at the top of the screen that there, under pedigree it says seven generations and there's an arrow there. You have the option of showing four, five, six, or the total possible seven generations. I currently have it set to seven generations. And each time I open my tree, it will show me this seven generation fan chart. This fan chart um, has a button on the bottom right hand side. It's white with two black lines through it. It almost looks like two little cables. We're going to click on that icon. It opens up the menu that allows you to change the view of your fan chart. Currently it's in the family lines view. You can also show birth country and the colors of the country represent places where people were born, their listed birth country. Swiping to the left, you can go to Sources. This is a graded fan chart where the darker the color, the more sources that have been added to this person. Then Stories is similarly graded, the number of stories. Likewise, Photos, the number of photos that have been uploaded to the family tree. Here at the end, we have uh, two options. Research Helps. And when you click on Research Help, the computer looks through the tree and looks for possible duplicates, records they think might be a match for your relative, and sometimes you'll see a purple, which is a suggested research idea. On the Records Help, I want to make a quick mention. In everything that we do, record hints are hints. We do not receive an exact match every time. And so you need to be very careful that as you look at these record hints that you give the diligent research attention to these hints, that you check to make sure that it matches the people, but also that it fits in their timeline of their life and makes sense. Frequently people just assume that because the computer has found this that it has to be a correct match and that is not true. So please be very, very careful as you look at these record hints and find the correct source for them. I'm going to go back to my menu. 
I'd like to go on the right hand side to enable multiple screens. Now you can open more than one screen on your phone or your iPad to show you two documents or two pieces of information that you can compare. And I'm going to use an example and show this to you. When we go back in, I'm going to select an ancestor. For me, I'm going to pick Anna Katrine Petter's daughter. She happens to be my second great-grandmother. I would like you to notice that on the bottom of your screen, you now have a gray bar. And in that gray bar on the left are what looks like two pages, kind of like a copy icon. And on the right-hand side, a plus. When you press the icon on the left-hand side, you'll notice that the screen kind of shrinks. Then by pressing the plus button on the right-hand side, it takes you back into the program so that you can find additional information. And I'm going to click on Tasks here at the bottom of the screen. And it brings up a list of ancestors with tasks. And I'm going to look down this list. And I happen to see that Anna Katrine Petter's daughter has a task. And so I'm going to tap on her name and it's going to open up um, the person that appears in this hint, okay? By looking down at your gray bar at the bottom of the page, you see a new icon, and the icon shows a page with a dotted line down the middle. When you click on that, it will open up the two screens side by side so that I can compare, and I can see quite obviously that these are not a match. And so I, I do not want to attach a hint that's with this new person to my tree without some very serious research. And we're not going to take the time to do that now. But you can uh, do that. You can add as many as five screens. I'm going to add another screen here at, by pressing the plus symbol. It takes me back into the program, and I could go again to Anna Katrine, but go to the three buttons on the upper right-hand side and open that menu. I can search records through any of the usual companies that you work with for uh, family research, and if you have already signed up for the free options for these companies, because you are a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's terrific. If not, if you're not a member or if you haven't signed up, it is also possible to get free access through the Carlsbad Library. Also, by going back to the, the three dots at the top of the screen, you'll see that there's also an option called Descendants with Tasks. This is a feature that allows you to assist in adding sources to people who you might not find by going up through your tree in the normal way. This takes an ancestor, in this case my second great-grandmother, and it lists the descendants she has that have tasks or records that might be matches to them. And you'll notice under her name at the top, there is uh, three generations and then an arrow down. When you tap on that arrow, uh, you have the option to make it as many as five generations. I'm going to do that, and it adds to the list. Um, and just scrolling down through the list, you can see that there is lots of work that can be done. And these are cousins, spouses of cousins, have a hint from the computer that that might possibly be more information than we previously have had and that we can attach by going to that record. Now, um, under the five generations is another option or filter. You can look at all possible options or just switch to the hints um, 
which will only give you the records that the computer has found. The temple portion of it is for those who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when you tap on that, it um, indicates by color uh, whether or not there's more information needed or if there um, is work that can be done. It's another way that you can use multiple screens. Um, I want to show you that by tapping again on the double paper icon in the very corner, um, it shrinks things down so that you can slide between screens uh, and it shows you the screens that you have open. To close a screen, you tap on the red X. This really is a nice feature that will help in your research. Going back out of our multiple screens, you just tap on the page that you'd like to focus on and it will take you back out of your multi multiple screens. And so we're going to go back to our pedigree. There's an arrow there and we'll tap on pedigree. Then down at the bottom of the screen is our more button which takes us to our menu. We'll tap on that. The things I'd like to talk about are found on the left hand side of the screen. Some of them you may be familiar with, others you may not. It's possible to search for historical records. You click on this, it gives you a search page and you type in the information and it will look through the collections in FamilySearch to see if they have a record or a collection that might be of use to you. Going back, tapping the button on the top that says more. You can also find a person which also gives you a search screen. You can also map your ancestors. If you've not done that, that's really interesting. Let's tap on it. But it pops up our dot of places where your ancestors live, where records show that they have lived. This one is showing that my grandfather lived in Los Angeles. If it gives a number, you can tap on it and expand the window and it will show you more. I'm going to close this window and go back. I want to focus on my contributions, which is a new feature that they have added. And so we'll tap on that. This opens up to show you graphs of the work that you have been doing in the family search tree. The beginning option or filter is all things that you have been adding. Then as we go across, you'll see that it says sources. This filter just tells you how many sources you've attached. And if you notice down below, it gives you the last seven years. Then we can go to memories. This is photos you've attached, stories or audio that you have attached to a person, documents that you may have attached as a picture. These things are counted as memories. The very last part says persons, and this is actually private persons or persons that you have added to the tree yourself. They had not been added before. They're new to the tree. Then back up to the top, the next option is changes. And if you click on this, you're going to get a list view of the last 300 changes you have made in the tree. If you are looking to get back to a record that is difficult to get to in the tree, this is perhaps another way you could get there. The last one is private persons, and I'm not going to click on that because it is the living people that I have added to my tree that only I can see. And to preserve their privacy, I won't click on it. For example, my children, my mother, cousins, nieces, nephews, anyone who I have added who is still alive will appear on this list. Other people cannot see their records. When they go in and pull up 
the tree, they cannot see these records unless they add them themselves. And so this is a great place to remember when you want to get to those living people, when you want to add the baptismal date for someone, or you want to add a marriage date. This is called My Contributions. It's also a little pat on the back. Back out using the arrow at the top left. And we go back to our menu, Enable Relationship Viewing. This allows you and others to see the relationship between you and them. You have to enable this in order for you to be able to tell whether you're second cousins, uh, third cousins once removed, first cousins three times removed. People who contribute to the tree and are listed as having added a source or changed a document, changed a record, or a person's profile, their name is listed there. And if you have enabled this and they have enabled this, then you will be able to tell who they are in relationship to you. And you would do that by clicking on Find My Relationship. The Memories app has some new features I hope that you'll look for. Also in a list view, I'll go back into Tasks, which is down at the bottom. In a list view, like on Tasks, you can press and hold on a person's name, and a menu will pop up, um, allowing you to go to their Details page, or to view your relationship, it will pull up a window showing the relationship, the direct line from you to them. Or you can open them in a new window, which would then be able to be added to the multiple screens. Um, I just wanted to mention that it's a, it's a very nice feature. I hope that this has been helpful to you. I do not know all there is or all that you can do with this program, and they are continuing to add to it. As with all genealogy programs, using them will be the way or the means for you to fully appreciate and increase the usefulness of the program to you. This app has lots of features, and I hope that you'll play with it a lot, that you'll try several things to increase your ability to do family history work.